we are going to study about cognitive psychology. Cognitive psychology is studies the human perception. How the human learns, how the human remembers, how he recalls the information. There are some people who forget the information. So what is forgetting? That is also a concern of cognitive psychology. Cognitive psychology is defined as a scientific study of mind. So scientifically, systematically, psychology studies the human mind. Cognitive psychology also concerned with the complex mental activities. What is complex mental activities? Complex mental activity is related to the thinking, related to the learning of the human behavior, related to the remembering, related to the creativity, related to the innovation. There are many complex mental activities which are going on in the human brain. And that is what we are going to study in cognitive psychology. But when psychology studies human being and animals, there has to be some procedure to study, which is called a scientific procedure to study their thinking, study their remembering, etc. So we have the methods in cognitive psychology. Basically, there are two methods in cognitive psychology. Goals of research. We are doing some research work. And what is the goal of the research work? Goal is that somebody is having some problem and we are going to solve that problem scientifically in psychology. For example, if a child cannot concentrate on the study, this is a problem. Then we have to collect the information about this problem which will give us some insight about the problem. And from where did we collect this information? We can collect this information from parents because they are immediate information provided about the child's problem. Second person who is very immediate to the child is a teacher or his friends. So we can collect the information from these reliable sources about why the child is losing concentration on the studies. On the basis of the information, which is the second step that is known as data collection. First step is problem, second step is data collection. On the basis of our data collection and the information which we have collected, on the basis of that we will form the hypothesis. What is hypothesis? Hypothesis is an assumption. We assume that this may be the reason. The reason you can quote is one, two or many. But whatever the assumption you are doing, before the experiment is conducted or before we conduct the scientific study on that problem, we have to assume hypothesis. Once hypothesis is formulated, then we can go for the laboratory experiment or test. Laboratory experiment will choose on the basis of the problem. We will choose on the basis of the hypothesis. And then we will conduct the experiment of the subject. This conclusion of the experiment will prove our hypothesis. If our conclusion tallies our hypothesis, that is the third step in the research, then that becomes a law, that becomes a principle, that becomes a conclusion. And if our hypothesis is not tallied, that means there is some information lacking, which is not giving us the total insight about the problem. So we have to go back to the second step and again collect the information, try to take the insight about the problem, form new hypothesis, select another experiment and come to the conclusion. Once conclusion tallies the hypothesis, it becomes a law. This is a general scientific process, systematic process through which we study certain problems. That is known as goals of research in psychology. Whereas another method in the psychology is distinctive research method. What is the distinctive research method? It has sub methods also. Like for example, first is lab experiment. Laboratory experiment is conducted under controlled condition. It is in the cubicles. Psychologists, they have the cubicles. Psychology, they have the laboratories. Psychology, they conduct the experiment in the cubicles on the experiment, on the subject. So we have the various apparatus, various tests, various experimental 
uh, experiments uh, through which we try to find out the uh, problem of the person. But then it is in the under the control condition. Let us take an example. We want to study whether computer training is going to help the subject or not. So we will have two candidates, candidate A and candidate B. We will give computer training to candidate A and we will find it out his performance. And we will not give the computer training to Mr. B and we will see his performance. Indeed, the computer training person, Mr. A, will have better performance than Mr. B. But for that reason, Mr. A and Mr. B should be male or should be female. This sex of the subject has to be controlled. So both the groups, subject, sex, age, their intelligence level to certain extent should be controlled. Even psychology sex has to be controlled. Psychologist who is going to give the instruction to the subject has to be controlled. So that all other factors are controlled. What is not controlled is a computer training is not controlled. So computer training is an independent variable and performance of the subject is dependent variable. In laboratory experiment, we try to find it out how the independent variable which is varied or manipulated by the psychologist has an effect on the performance of the subject. This a such type of an experiment is conducted in the laboratory where all other factors are controlled. What is not controlled is computer training is not controlled. And therefore, 100% we can say that the result is because of the computer training, because of independent variable, dependent variable varies. These are known as laboratory experiments. Whereas second experiment is psychological and biological research. In psychological and biological research, how the mind works, how the mind is processed, biology that is concerned about the sense organs. The information about the world comes to us through the eye, ear, nose, tongue, skin. And this information is processed to our brain through the biology. And then our thinking starts. This is psychology. So psychology is related to the biology. So psychological and biological research, they study about, for example, if we have to do the post-mortem in a forensic psychology. Then we are concerned with what information was processed through the biology and what thinking was going on before the death of that person. We can relate these two things and try to find it out the, what is the process, thought process of, of the mind in psychological and biological research. Whereas the thought technique or third method in cognitive psychology is a self-report technique. Now self-report technique is only applicable to the human being. Animals cannot do the self-report. What they are thinking, what they are feeling, what they are uh, memorizing, how they are reacting, how they are understanding the situation, etc. If we have to study, we have to ask question. Question to your own self. That what I am thinking about this particular situation. Am I taking this situation positively? or negative. Ask question to yourself and your mind will tell you how you are reacting to this situation, how you are taking this situation. So that is known as self-report. Self means your own self is reporting about your own feelings, about your own understanding, about your own analyzing, about your own thinking, etc. And last is computer simulation. Artificial intelligence is also very important. It exactly thinks the way the human thinks. So there is some similarity. Human thinking is processed in the encoded into the computer and computer also thinks on the line of the human. Such type of a study are known as computer simulation. Let us see what is the domain of cognitive psychology. Cognitive psychology studies the cognitive neuroscience. Neuroscience related to the mind, related to the brain and how the brain thinks, how the brain analyzes, how the brain interprets, that is a concern of cognitive psychology. Perception, if I have to give example of perception, suppose for example, one glass is full, half filled, 
So some people they think that glass is half filled. Some people they think that glass is half empty. That is perception. How people perceive the same thing differently. Thinking. Thinking is the process, thought processes. How the thinking goes. How the person reacts to the thinking. Then attention. Attention is a process of selection. We have many stimulus. But we attend to some stimulus. Because of our interest, because of our desires, because of our motives, because of our needs. That is called attention. Representation of knowledge. Whatever the information we are taking, we are learning, we represent our knowledge in a positive way. Then consciousness. We are conscious. There are consciously we are learning certain things. Consciously we are representing certain things. We are aware about many things at present situation also. Memory. Whatever we are learning, we try to store it in our memory. Imagery. Images and imagination is also a concern of cognitive psychology. Languages, there are many people they know how to learn the languages. Some people they speak Hindi well, some people they speak English well, some people they Gujarati and Tamil and foreign languages, German, French language, etc. So language, how people learn language, that is also a concern of cognitive psychology. Developmental psychology is concerned about the developmental stages right from the conception till the old age. There are many stages are coming like babyhood, then childhood, adolescent age, adulthood and then old age. All this is developmental psychology. That is also a concern of cognitive psychology. Pattern recognition. What type of a pattern we have? And how do we recognize that pattern? For example, circle, rectangle, square, these patterns are learned and recognized, memorized, etc. Human intelligence, artificial intelligence, that is also very closely related to the psychology. That is all domain of psychology. But suppose if we have to see the history of cognitive psychology, then we have to go back to the 18th century. In 18th century, people thought about the early thoughts on cognitive psychology, early thoughts of thinking. Previously, it is also known as school of psychology. In that school of psychology, how the person learns, how he thinks about the situation. So, there were two ways. One is a person learned from the nature, experiences, early experiences. And another thing is that nurture, that is a person is a, has an innate ability to think. That is was the early thought. But in after some years, in people started thinking in a different way. The advanced thinking came in psychology saying that the only nature and nurture is not important, but even the sense organs are important. How do we see the thing? How do we hear the uh, sounds? How do we feel the object? And how do we remember the object? All these sense organs, five sense organs, eye, ear, nose, tongue, skin, these are very important organs to process the environmental information to the brain. And how it is analyzed, how it is processed further. That was the thought came and that was another school of psychology which is concerned about the information coming through the sense organs. But in 20th century, some people they thought that this is not enough. It is stimulus response process is very important. Stimulus is coming in a two ways. Either internal stimulus or either it is external stimulus. What is internal stimulus? Internal stimulus, for example, a person is feeling hungry. Hunger is a biological internal stimulus. So person will not keep quiet. He will start searching for the food. That is a response coming from the human being. The stimulus came, that's why response came. So there is a relationship between S and R. Stimulus response process. Sometimes the stimulus comes from external environment. For example, somebody says something. And what do we think? Do we take it, oh, it's a friendly talk? Or do we take it, oh my God, this person has insulted me. 
then the thinking and response to a two different way will come in a different angle. If I am thinking that, oh, he said friendly, I will not mind it. It gives me satisfaction, it gives me happiness. But if I think that person is insulting me, then my reaction to that person will be very negative. That is known as SR relationship. That was the new thinking in psychology. But recently, if you see, that there is a gestalt thinking also, which gives us the humanistic approach. Humanistic approach where the human is considered as a human. Previously, human was not taken into the consideration. But humanistic approach has given us broader view about the human, broader thinking about the human. And that is how the history of psychology, in co of cognitive psychology, kept on developing. That's all for today. Friends, we will go for the next video soon about the learning and memory. See you friends again. Thank you.